We need a bipartisan sort of Virginia plan, something that enables us to work together across partisan divides to tap federal dollars so we can expand health care so it will cover everyone. We believe that health care for all is essential and a just and compassionate commonwealth. For us, for us, and while we're here as people of faith, is because it's an ethical and moral issue, an ethical obligation to care for the needy and the most vulnerable who are among us. We say Virginia is for lovers, but Virginia has very restricted Medicaid eligibility. And nationally, Virginia is ranked 46 out of 50 states, 46 in terms of what it invests in its residents. Just to emphasize that point a different way, only four states invest less than, than the state of Virginia. Virginia can do better, Virginia must do better if we're going to claim to care for all of our citizens. It's not just the poor and it's not just a matter of charity. We believe this is sound fiscal policy that actually this will be beneficial to all Virginians as a part of that. It's an economic issue. I believe that a healthy American citizenship will create greater American prosperity. So as we think about competing in the world stage for jobs, for manufacturing, for economic growth and stimulation, having healthy workforce and having a well-educated workforce, I believe are critical elements of success. Finally, from a fairness standpoint, when we go back and look at the funding of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, um, the hospital field elected to put their money where their mouth was. And we, the hospital industry, agreed to take payment cuts because we expected that if we took payment cuts, there would be a reduction in the amount of uncompensated care that was provided by hospitals across our nation through expansion. And so we were prepared to take a payment reduction in return for having more people covered who would be able to come access the care. Well, it's interesting, those payment cuts for Virginia are about $130 million a year. And by 2025, they're projected to be $500 million per year. The discussion about repeal and replace has no discussion about returning those payment cuts. It's more about use for other purposes. So again, I believe that your advocacy on behalf of the less fortunate among us um, is important. But also submit that it's not just about the most fortunate. You can lose your job having a very well-paid job and lose your job and then also lose your coverage. So where do you go during that period of gap? And the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act offered opportunities for people who are highly compensated to still be able to find health insurance if they were to lose their job. We seek justice. We seek equity and we seek compassion for all human beings. Now when I, uh, I can't think of any issue that's likely to come before the Virginia General Assembly in the upcoming year that offers us a better opportunity to advance the cause of social justice and equity than the expansion of Medicaid. John has already said to you that uh, we rank 46th in per capita expenditures on Medicaid. What he didn't say to you is we're the seventh wealthiest state in the union. If you're poor and childless in this, this state, doesn't matter how poor you are, you can't qualify for Medicaid benefits. Uh, ex Medicaid expansion would add 240,000 low-income Virginians to the eligibility roll, uh, significantly reducing for our state the ranks of the uninsured. Medicaid expansion will yield net but budget savings. If you look at your chart book, you're going to find that yes, uh, adding uh, additional coverage is going to cost more. But the an additional money we receive from the federal government will more than offset that to the tune of $134, uh, $38 million during the upcoming biennium, and it will increase thereafter. So it's going to help us in from bu a budgetary point of view. As Mark has already indicated to you, it's going to help stabilize the finances of local hospitals. Uh, the uh, Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association last year told us that 42% of rural hospitals in this state are in trouble financially. They operate in the red during 2015. So this helps. And it will also st stimulate the state's economy. Uh, the chart book tells you about the number of additional jobs that will be held, held 
in the health care sector. It's about 35,000 additional jobs in the health care sector, all of which pours money into the local economy and which helps stimulate. So as followers of Christ, we recognize that this sort of care for our neighbor is fundamental to our faith. Jesus uh, told the wonderful story, the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, to answer the question of who is my neighbor. And he talked about all those who passed by someone who had been injured uh, and beaten and left in a ditch, those who were considered to be people of faith. And then someone outside the faith was the one who stopped, bound up his wounds, made sure he received the care he needed. And he said that is what it means to care for our neighbor, and our neighbor means everyone, of course. Um, Jesus tells those who seek to be his followers that they'll be judged um, not on how they do on Bible trivia or how many answers they can get correct uh, religiously, but on how they treat one another, uh, how well they have fed the hungry, given drink to the thirsty, uh, welcomed the stranger, clothed the naked, uh, cared for those who are sick, and visited those who are in prison. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community, in any of your towns within the land that uh, your God is giving to you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand, willingly lending enough to meet the need, whatever it might be. This is why we're confident that we should not rebuild our economy or claim to provide morally-based health care by slashing vital programs such as Medicaid that help to alleviate poverty, diminish access to health care, and support those in need. Jewish tradition teaches us that human life is of infinite value and that the preservation of life supersedes almost all other considerations. As Jews, we believe that God endowed humankind with the understanding and ability to become partners with God in making a better world. The use of our wisdom to cure illness has been a central theme in Jewish thought and history. Providing health care is not just an obligation for the patient and the doctor, but importantly for society as well. It is for this reason that Maimonides, a revered Jewish scholar and a doctor himself, listed health care first on his list of the ten most important communal services that a city has to offer its residents. Throughout history, almost all self-governing Jewish communities set up systems to ensure that all of their citizens, all of their citizens, had access to health care. Enrich the poor, raise the fallen, comfort the sorrowful, bring healing to the sick, reassure the fearful, rescue the oppressed, bring hope to the hopeless, shelter the destitute. But, uh, there's one of the, this is from the Islamic tradition, uh, the Islamic uh, society of uh, Islamic society of Winchester, right? One of the greatest acts of kindness is giving charity to the poor, the needy, the weak. In Islam, helping those in need is one of the central tenets. Such a belief comes all the more valuable and important, especially these days because of the prevalence of poverty. The Quran emphasizes giving to charity. In fact, there's an obligation command of Muslims to do so. The Quran repeatedly commands the Muslims to give zakat, which is essentially a charity tax in which Muslims give a portion of their income to the poor.